All right, guys, for the uh, Z-axis, I've just made up this simple timber frame, which gets us fairly close to getting the top of the scale and the underside of the bed fairly close. And I've just had to do a little bit of shimming to get that spot on. All right, guys, to measure this as accurately as I possibly can to get that shimming right, I'm just using these adjustable parallels that sit on top of the glass scale up onto the underside of the bed here and I just move those parallels from one end to the other and shim as required to get that I reckon within 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of a mil. Finally I will be running a an indicator along the underside of this to get the level where I need it, get that zero zeroed out and also run the indicator along this face here and packing to get this absolutely spot on as well parallel with the bed of the lathe so I'm happy with where that's sitting at the moment I'm going to mark out the uh, the holes so I pop through and we'll drill and we'll get this mounted up and uh, we'll clock it on this face here and find out how far we're at we can make up some packing to suit. So the plan is that we get this scale in position. Once we've got the scale in position and we know where we are, we can then start making the bracketing up that's going to support that reed head or position that reed head uh, off the saddle itself. All right, well, I'll get these uh, marked up and get them center popped and we'll get some holes drilled. All right, Matt, how does that look? All right, there? Yeah. Okay. Once again, Matt, just line him up, Matt. one. Right, I've made up uh, two 6 mil packers that will go under either end of those scales. Um, from my layouts that I've done I do require these to get uh, a little bit of distance away from the bed to enable that um, supporting angle that I've, uh, I've purchased to, uh, to fit and be able to bolt up underneath the reed head. The supporting angle is 150 by 50, I would have preferred 150 by 75 but I can't get it, hence I've got to move that scale out a little bit. So we'll get these mounted up with the scale and we'll see how we look. Just on my rough checkouts, I reckon I've got to pack this end out about 100 thou as well. So we'll see how we're looking to start with. We'll get this clocked and uh, dialed in and we'll see how things are, are, are progressing with that. Alright guys, this is a bit of a dicky setup I know, but it's the only way I can read this with my uh, little mirror. That's reading on zero at the moment. And I just wanted to make sure that we've got the movement that we needed in this direction to get that um, to get that running parallel. Um, I can then worry about getting this way set up. As I said, I'm pretty sure I've got to pack this out about 100 thou. But that's sitting bang on the zero at the moment. Let's wind it down and see where we're sitting down the other end. set up nice and parallel with the bed. All right, we'll do a set up and look at it this way. As I said, I'm pretty sure I've got a pack of about 100 thou at the other end of the show. But um, let's see where we're actually sitting eh, and see what we need to do. Um, I've got to mention too that I've got the six mil packers in underneath here at the moment. All right, let's run it up this way and then we'll see how we look.
All right, exactly 50 thou. But we've got to pack the other end out 50 thou. So that's not too bad, actually. I'm fairly happy with that. That's good. All right, we'll make up a 50 thou shim for the far end and we'll see how things are looking once we get it buttoned up again. But uh, it's going to be a fairly easy setup. Touch wood, I hope. All right, guys, so I've made up this little 50 thou packer and uh, believe it or not, the uh, scrap piece that came off the tube for the uh, for the x-axis that I cut out is exactly 50 thou and it's exactly 20 mil wide so exactly the same as the packers that I've got in there so um, gotta fluke them every now and again all right well I'll get that uh, that packer in place and we'll see how the dial indicator looks all right so I've just had to make up a um, four thou or a 0.1 mil shim very simple just for this uh, headstock end and uh, if you are mounting these particular scales up, you will have to make shim sets to suit. You do get some shims in the set, but um, they're all the same the same thickness. It would be great if they actually put different thicknesses uh, in their packaging to help you out rather than the one size fits all. So uh, I'm going to slip that in there and then we'll run the dial indicator back up and down again. And uh, we'll see how close we've got it. Got that within a, a thou, a thou and a half. So I'm not going to fiddle with it too much further. Um, I'll get in and I'll readjust the level to get it nice and even between the underside and the uh, and the underside of the bed. And then we'll leave it there. We'll start making up our bracketing to uh, to fix our reed head. All right, happy with that so far. All right, guys, I'm really happy with how that's come up. We've got that within a thou in both the horizontal and the vertical direction. So that's, uh, that's not going anywhere now. We're gonna keep that where it is. Uh, next job we need to do is to start setting up the bracketing that will come off the saddle and then connect up to the reed head. So that'll be our next project. And then we can start looking at fitting the, uh, the covers on. All right, we'll leave it for now and uh, we'll see you when we get back. We're ready to start that next stage. Just before I move on, you might notice with this x-axis I didn't set up with dial indicators. And the reason for that is, is that we actually have a machine surface on the saddle here. And we've got this nice little machine 45 degree arras on the saddle. And I've actually used that as a guide to set the uh, aluminum tube up to. So we've gone corner to corner. And I've made sure that that scale inside is actually pushed up hard against the top, inside top of that, uh, of that tube. So no real necessary, or really no need to set this up with dial indicators. I've gone off all the machine surfaces for uh, for this particular setup. All right, next part of this project is we have to connect the reed head onto the saddle. So as the saddle moves, it will be pulling the reed head along. Unlike the x-axis that we did, where the reed head is stationary and the scale moves backwards and forwards. So we've got a fair distance to travel down here and then to get to the reed head. So I did a click and pick from my local aluminium supplier. You've got this 150 by 50 angle. So that's what we're going to use to, uh, to get this right. And if my numbers work out okay, I'll be able to put some short slots in here for the adjustment for the reed head. And we can put some slots into this side here the adjustment up and down. So we'll have in and out to pick up the reed head and up and down to set the height of the reed head. All right, let's get over to where all good projects start onto the bandsaw and we'll get that uh, cut to a length. The length I'm cutting it to is what the um, width of the reed head is. That's uh, 82 millimeters. Now one of the reasons I love these little bandsaws is the actual capacity you can get into them. So I can fit a 180 wide piece of material into this uh, just I can cut it. So that's uh, a bit of 150 by 50 uh, angle and you can see that it does fit in there quite comfortably. Alright, let's get that uh, cut, get it set up in the mill 
and uh, we'll start cleaning that up and uh, we'll also get some slots in. Okay, just going to give that a skim across the top um, and the bottom just to square it up and bring it back to uh, the width of uh, 82 millimeters. Um, that little bandsaw, um, I've measured that. That's that's cut within 0.2 of a millimeter over that uh, over that 150 millimeter. So I'm really really happy with uh, with that little bandsaw. It's uh, it's pretty accurate. Flip that around and uh, we'll get the other side machined up to width and we'll come back and uh, have a look at how we're going to mark this up. Okay, we'll, s we'll cut the slots on the side. Uh, I'm going to be using M6, so I'm actually going to slot that as an M6. Uh, M6s are slightly undersized uh, on the thread, so we should be fine with that. Um, once we've got that done, I need to cut the slots in on this side for the reed head and we might have to put this against an angle plate to get that a little bit more secure. But uh, we'll get these slots cut in first and uh, we'll see how we're travelling. one cut in and then as I said we'll flip it up and have a look at doing the uh, slots for the reed head. Okay so we've only cut those slots 10mm long, that's all we need just to get that adjustment uh, up onto the reed head. All right, I'll set up and I'll get this, uh, this side on the go, get these slots cut. All right guys, we're set up to, uh, we're gonna set up to slot these uh, smaller holes for the reed head. Um, the drawing showed at 68 centers, but I measure it at uh, 67 centers on this. So I'm gonna go with 67. And once again, it's worthwhile checking the gear before you go ahead and start uh, cutting. Um, often you'll find that the, the drawings will say one thing, on a lot of the imported stuff, but the actual measurements uh, are a little bit different. All right, I've got a three mil um, slot drill in here. We're gonna go down, and we're gonna side cut um, half a mil either side. Um, only gonna be short slots on this, um, probably about eight mil. And uh, that should give us plenty of uh, adjustment for position up for that, uh, for that reed head. So I've got that cut out uh, and side cut to width of four millimeters. Now you might notice I'm actually using one of my Cant twist clamps that I made. So go back and have a look at the video on that. If you want the drawings for this, uh, just flick us an email and uh, I can uh, I can send them through to you. Righto, so uh, everything worked out absolutely spot on with that. Really happy with how that's come together. And you can see underneath there the two M4s at the 67 centers. Looks really neat, looks like it's meant to be there. All right, I've got the DRO hooked up, so let's give a bit of a crank and uh, we'll see some numbers ticking over. So I have run this uh, full stroke up and down and uh, it reads the full range, so really, really happy with that. Okay, let's have a look at the next job we have to do. So our next job is to get the, um, the cover put over this, the coolant and uh, swarf cover, and we'll get that mounted up next. The other thing I need to look at is cable management. 
So I'm going to use a drag chain in here, same as what I used on my other lathe. Uh, difference will be this one will be a fully enclosed unit, though that the uh, the swarf won't get into it, unlike uh, what does happen on the other unit. We'll go over there and have a bit of a look, and I'll show you what's going on over there. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. You can see the drag chain that I had mounted in there for my smaller lathe. So that's uh, it's quite effective the way that works. As I said, the only issue is that it does get swarf through the openings and does sit in there. It doesn't do any damage or cause any issues, but um, just a bit of a nuisance of anything. As well as the two cables running through that, I've also got um, coolant hose running up through that.